I'm Rebecca Poole. I'm the Deputy Director of the Red Center for Food Policy and Obesity. And my work really involves addressing the issue of weight bias and discrimination. We look at the nature and extent of weight bias and discrimination. We look at the impact that it has on quality of life for people who are affected. We look at different settings where this occurs, whether it's uh, healthcare settings or employment settings or schools or the media. Um, or even family and relationships. And we look at different strategies to try to address this problem. So how can we change societal attitudes to reduce bias? And how can we change settings to make them uh, less biased towards people who are affected by obesity? I had an opportunity as a graduate student to do some research on weight bias, which at that point I didn't know anything about. As I started to do work in that area, um, it, it became really apparent that there wasn't very much attention to this issue and yet the impact of this problem for people who are affected by bias and discrimination is just devastating. I also became aware of just how often they were experiencing the stigma in their lives and what a barrier that created for different outcomes that they were t trying to achieve. Uh, sometimes uh, women that I was working with would report feeling stigmatized by family members, um, even by strangers if they were just going outside for a walk to exercise, people would yell nasty comments at them. And also comments from health providers as well that were stigmatizing. Not only were women devastated by these experiences, but they were often internalizing them, blaming themselves for the stigma that they were confronting. And that created a really devastating and negative cycle. And what's interesting that we see with weight bias that we don't actually see with other forms of bias is this in-group bias. So even individuals affected by obesity can often express weight bias towards others or themselves as well. I think it speaks to the fact that there is so much internalization that that negativity comes both on oneself and oftentimes the bias just becomes automatic. But I think it also speaks to these perceptions that we have as a society that body weight is somehow a temporary state. With that kind of mentality, there's a very easy distinction that starts to be made of, of me versus them. You know, I'm not like those other individuals or I'm not going to identify with that group. Um, and, and that's where we see this, this distinction kind of playing out in, in different ways that we don't see with other forms of bias. And it really is something that is very easily internalizable because no one's challenging it. Stigma can be expressed in, in many different ways. Sometimes it can be expressed as uh, just very pejorative uh, comments or criticisms about weight. Other times weight bias can be um, expressed in more overt forms of unfair treatment, not being offered a job because of one's weight or being assigned lower salary recommendations because of, of one's weight or even losing a job because of one's weight. We also see weight bias in the media that affects women in a lot of ways. So if we look at common adult and children's forms of entertainment media, we see very stigmatizing portrayals of people with obesity. Very oftentimes these portrayals are of women with obesity where they are ridiculed, they are made fun of, they are shown engaging in very stereotypical behaviors and this has an impact on women's own perceptions of themselves. There's this assumption and I think an assumption shared by some health providers that you know, maybe stigma isn't such a bad thing. Maybe blame isn't such a bad thing. Maybe that's what people need to lose weight. It will provide motivation or incentive for weight loss. But that couldn't be further from the truth. And what we see from research is when people, especially women, feel stigmatized, shamed, blamed about their body weight, this leads to a number of adverse health outcomes, many of which actually reinforce weight gain. When it comes to body image in women, most women feel badly about their bodies regardless of what their body size is and and that's become so common that it's referred to as the normative discontent right women feel badly no matter what they look like and and they're taught to feel that way because of messages that we see from the diet industry from the fashion industry and these messages promoting unrealistic and unhealthy ideals of thinness because these ideals are so stringent that when women deviate from those expectations even just a little bit they start to feel bad about themselves. When women feel blamed about their weight, they often just internalize this. They don't realize that this is a legitimate form of bias. Just like we see race discrimination, gender discrimination, discrimination based on sexual orientation, weight bias is a legitimate form of discrimination and prejudice. And we need to recognize that and women need to give that a name. 
When we understand that what we're experiencing is a legitimate form of unfair treatment, then we can act upon it. We can be assertive. We can demand respect and dignity and equal treatment in the healthcare environment. With lipedema, there is no way for people on the outside to know what causes that. And when we have such widespread bias and discrimination towards people who appear to have obesity, those negative assumptions and bias are going to automatically be applied to individuals, even if they're suffering from an issue from which they have no personal control. When people struggle to lose weight, when they're unable to lose weight, or when they're gaining weight, too often the assumption by providers is that they're non-compliant with treatment recommendations or they lack motivation to make lifestyle changes or they're just not trying hard enough instead of considering other contributing factors that may be at play such as the progression of an undiagnosed disease that is just not entering the mindset and it needs to we need to really recognize the very complex causes of weight gain many of which have nothing to do with personal control or willpower well, there have been several studies that have looked at both explicit and implicit levels of weight bias in both the general population and in populations of health providers. And what these studies show is that levels of weight bias are virtually the same among medical providers and the general population where we see fairly high moderate levels of weight bias among physicians and medical students. Explicit weight bias is bias that we're willing to express, stereotypes that we're willing to be forthcoming about with others. Implicit bias refers to attitudes and bias that we may not be willing to express overtly to others or that we may not even really be aware of. Both of those levels of weight bias are high among medical providers and we need to recognize that this broader societal bias that we have does not make health providers immune, that they are part of our society and they are susceptible to those same biases. We surveyed over 2,400 women with overweight or obesity and we provided them with a long list of different individuals in their lives. We asked them, to what extent have you ever felt stigmatized about your weight? Doctors were number two on that list. 69% of women reported experiencing weight bias by a doctor because of their weight, and over half of those women reported that this happened multiple times in their lives. We hear anecdotally all the time that when patients go to the doctor for a presenting problem that's unrelated to weight, that their weight is often blamed for whatever problem they go to seek. And as a result of these kinds of experiences, patients become reluctant to talk about weight-related health. They avoid health care. We know when patients feel stigmatized, especially women, when they feel stigmatized about their weight in a health care encounter, uh, they're less likely to seek future medical appointments. They're more likely to avoid care. That's a real clinical concern. Now that we have a name for lipedema, that gives women and patients with this disease power. And in many cases, they may need to use that power to educate their own providers about this issue. So when women go into appointments with healthcare providers, it's good to bring a list of specific questions as well as resources that they may even have to give their provider to educate them about this issue. We also recommend that patients bring in a support person with them into appointments because when a patient feels shamed or stigmatized or blamed about their weight, they often shut down. They internalize and they, they don't pursue the questions that they have. They feel that they're not entitled to go through with those questions. So having a support person there to advocate for that individual can be very helpful. Uh, Sometimes this even means going further than that if bias continues. You know, most health care facilities and hospitals have a patient advocate there. So going to the patient advocate to discuss these issues, um, writing down the issues that you feel are problematic so that either you can go back and discuss those with your provider or consider switching providers to someone who will listen. Patient assertiveness is also something that too often people shy away from because of this power hierarchical difference in the patient-provider relationship. But Patients are knowledgeable, and a lot of times patients have done a lot of extra research on their own, and, and we need to not be afraid to, to use that. What we see in experimental studies, actually with medical trainees, is that when people are educated about the complex causes of obesity, factors outside of personal control, whether it be medical conditions or genetics or biology or environmental factors, that can reduce levels of weight bias. So that is an important strategy that we need to pay attention to. When it comes to the healthcare environment though, that's where a lot of different changes are, are required. Right now in medical school curriculum, there is very little training on obesity, let alone weight management, and certainly not on weight bias. 
and that has to change. We need to see increased training um, of these issues early on in medical, in medical school so that students have opportunities to practice bias-free sensitive care in the delivery of care of, of obesity and weight management. We also need to have training for healthcare providers who are already in clinical practice. Again, both on obesity and different types of obesity-related diseases, uh, but also on, on weight bias, how this impacts their patients. How can they interact with patients differently in ways that empower and support patients rather than shame or stigmatize them? I think that that awareness is a really important first step. You know, 10, 15 years ago, I think the awareness was not there, but there is an increasing recognition that this is a problem and that this is something that needs to be addressed um, in the medical field and in a range of different specialties, and it starts with that awareness. I do think that we're making progress. I do think that this is a form of bias that can be very difficult to change because the societal attitudes remain so prevalent. Some studies have also tried to use different forms of empathy induction to help people understand what is it like to live this experience of weight bias. That's showed you know, mixed evidence. We can only be so effective at doing this unless the rest of our environment changes. This is a, a complicated process where women need to not only challenge their own self-doubt and self-blame, but they need to be able to start to challenge it with other people. We need to demand respect for women regardless of their body size. And, and that is a right. That is a right that these women have. But too often, they, they've internalized the bias so strongly that they feel undeserving. And, and that's where we need to change. We, we really need to challenge the attitudes, challenge them where we see them, and advocate for respect and dignity. One of the most important messages of this film is that it's not, it's not their fault. And that is such an empowering message to begin making change with.